Hello, welcome to Two Day Pass, and we're going to do a driving test route. So I'm here at Isleworth, and along the way, I'm going to teach you all the things that you need to know in order to pass your driving test first time. So let's go. So if I'm starting my driving test, I want to start by doing all-round observations, making sure it's nice and clear, and giving a good example, impression to that examiner that I know exactly what I need to do before I drive away. And that means I have to check to see if it's safe to drive away. If we just drive off at the beginning of our test without doing any observations, if you were an examiner, would you give you a driving license? Now we're pulling up here to the end of the actual car park to the test centre and I'm going to turn left. Now it's quite a busy little industrial area here and I have a van coming from the right. It's quite difficult to see because of parked vehicles so I'm going to peep and creep. That means I'm going to move forwards nice and slow and just make sure it's clear before I complete the junction. Okay I'm going to take the next road on the left, mirror mirror signal left. This route would be very similar to the last route that I covered. I don't know why but my nose is super itchy. Hang on, one second. I'm back. Okay, there's a lady in front of me. One lady and her dog. And a very strange looking phone case. <laughs> that was weird. Everything's a bit strange. Anyways. Right, okay, so I'm um, turning left. And now there's no cars coming. We're off. Woohoo! Now you want to do about 100 miles an hour down this road and make sure your examiner feels like he's going to... No, I'm just joking. 20 miles an hour maximum. Make sure it's clear here on the right. It's a mini roundabout. A lot of people don't see this mini roundabout, especially so quickly after just leaving the test. They're going to be in this kind of anxious mindset, maybe missing signs, maybe missing road markings. This is something that's super common. The oncoming video is... Uh, video? vehicle is over the center line so that means i need to come to a slow or possibly stop so if you've got a road like this one which has parked cars on both sides then you must make sure that you've got enough room to keep going and if you have an oncoming vehicle and it's over the center line this is most likely not going to be enough room for you to proceed. It does depend on the size of your car and the size of the oncoming vehicle because you must have enough space to keep going if you're going to keep going. If you're in doubt, don't. So that means if the oncoming vehicle is over the center line and you're not too sure if you have enough space, they've stopped for me. I was hoping this would be a good example. But I'm not over the center line, yet they've stopped probably because they feel they don't have enough room. Why are all these people teaching? Okay, right, so I turned left at the roundabout, just mirror signal, no oncoming traffic from the right hand side at the roundabout, so it's pretty smooth sailing, just cruising through the roundabout, just letting know, uh, letting everybody know that I'm turning left and it's the same guy again okay uh, <laughs> what's going on <laughs> okay keeping roughly a meter from the left and we're on a 20 mile an hour road Woohoo! right so this is actually really good for a lot of people that are doing their driving test yes it's difficult to maintain 20 Yet, it's very good for you to be in an area where it's 20 miles an hour pretty much everywhere you go because that way you can do your test nice and gentle, nice and slow, see the vehicles oncoming, judge your distance from the parked cars at the same time and you can kind of get a good idea whether it's safe to proceed. Also gives you more time to see the road, to look ahead, to see the poles that have got the signs on them or to see a junction that might be coming up in the distance like a zebra crossing with your beacons. Usually poles will have signs on them or beacons on them for zebra crossing as an example and this can help you to identify hazards from a distance so here we've got a triangle as an example school zone all right cool i don't think the school's in at the moment um but it's definitely something there to help me recognize 
you know, any hazards that could potentially be coming. Bus stop, no one at the bus stop. What else is next coming up? Well, I've got an oncoming vehicle. Is it over the centre line? Yes, it is. Let me start to slow down a little bit. See that gap. If it was a big red bus, then there would be no way I would have passed through that gap. So I'm slowing down early, noticing the vehicle from a distance is over the center line, thinking about all of this as soon as possible, and then acting on it. So look, got parked car here, mirror, mirror, internal mirror, right mirror, check to go and change my direction around the parked car. If I don't see that early, I don't do my mirror checks and I just change my direction, that's not safe. Got a sign here for the roundabout. Got a sign here for the roundabout. And I was turning left. These vehicles aren't over the center line. So I'm going to go super, super slow. And I can see my gap here. I can see this oncoming car. I can see my gap here. I can see this oncoming car and then I can keep going. If I do that any faster, it's just dangerous. Even as an experienced driver, we're just looking to have an accident. We're pushing our luck. So when you see other people just zooming around, doing all of this really random driving, that is not safe. Do not copy other people on the road. You're here to demonstrate to the examiner that you're a safe driver. Looking down the road, seeing the signs, seeing the hazards early, and you're adjusting your speed safely in order to give you the best chance to deal with the hazards. The other extreme opposite is to drive way too slow, and this can cause serious faults as well, as it's not an appropriate speed this will hold the traffic behind you forcing them to almost want to overtake you and potentially driving into oncoming traffic which would be you know a worst case scenario so if we're doing the correct speed maintaining the speed limit providing it's safe to do so these situations are less likely to happen so that's the opposite side of the spectrum roundabout turning right fourth exit mirror mirror interior mirror right mirror signal right and approach at walking speed looking at the vehicle's wheels i could see the van was going off the roundabout i put the signal back on check the left mirror at the first exit check the left mirror at the second exit check the left mirror at the third exit check the left mirror again signal left and now i'm off the roundabout do always pair your mirrors i'm just saying the left mirror because it's quicker and it's the most important one to be checking when you're going to the left so interior mirror left mirror at every exit interior left mirror every exit Exit, into your left mirror every exit then when you come to the exit before the exit that you need to take make sure you apply your left signal to tell people you're going to exit the roundabout and then you're off the roundabout and if you check your mirrors at every exit you're going to know who is on your left and it will give you more confidence to exit the roundabout safely if you're worried um, about roundabouts then this is something you need to start to practice. Okay, I'm doing the same route to start with um, that I did on the last video, and that's following the sign towards M3, A316. That means I'm going to be turning right at the roundabout, third exit. So mirror, mirror, signal, position, speed. Nice and slow, I can go around this lorry, I can go around the next lorry, there's enough room to slowly keep going up until the traffic light. If I wasn't sure, I could stop before the lorries, before the traffic light, and just wait until the traffic starts to flow again. Okay, so here we are. This is a very strange shape roundabout, as it's not round, it's oval. There's the first exit, I'm going to take the third exit. This is why it's strange. Second exit, boom, boom. Straight away, third exit. Is there anybody on my left? Yes, there is. So I'm going to stay in this right lane. If there was no one on my left, I would have moved across and into the left lane. Okay, lights change, 40 mile an hour road. There's no one in the left lane anymore. I'm going to move back over to the left, 30 miles an hour now. 
35 miles an hour now and 40 miles an hour now. So we must make sure that we get up to speed. If you're driving on this road at 30 miles an hour and it's a clear road, you will fail for use of speed or appropriate speed because you're not doing the speed limit and there's no need why not. So you must get up to speed. This is very important. A lot of people fail on the driving test. One serious fault because they get onto a faster road and they don't go faster. So this is a serious fault for the same reason I mentioned before. Somebody might overtake, it might put them into a bend where there's an oncoming car and you know, I don't need to go too in depth in describing these worst case scenarios, but that is the reason why going slower is actually dangerous, okay? All right, so here we are on the dual carriageway again. You're more than likely gonna be asked to show me question on this road. So Scott, would you show me how you had washed the rear window using the wipers and washers? I'm gonna push this button here and that washes the rear window and it automatically stops. Now, if you don't feel it's safe because you wanna keep your hands on the wheel and keep your eyes on the road ahead, then you wait until you feel safe to do it. Do not rush and all, you know look down and while you're doing 40 miles an hour and there's a traffic jam up ahead and, oh my God, I gotta, I gotta wash my wheel. No, when it's safe, <laughs> okay. Now, this happens a lot, by the way. A lot of people will fail for their show me question. And you'll hear a lot of misinformation out there. You can't fail for your show me, tell me questions. This is not correct. You can fail for your show me, tell me questions. If you do exactly what I just said. So you're driving dangerously trying to answer a show me question. You know what's going to happen next? You're probably going to have an accident. So would you, again, if you were the examiner, would you pass you if you were if you were driving with an Uber car driver and he was doing that while he was doing 50 miles an hour down the dual carriageway? What kind of rating would you give him? Okay, so here we have a traffic jam. Now, last time I came to this roundabout, there was the roadworks here, which made things completely different to what it would normally work out to. Now, I do have this route and this video with Mike, um, which is another driving instructor. So if you wanna go check the channel, you'll see Mike, a uh, thumbnail of him. And we have done a couple of routes here at Isleworth, and we've also done some at Southall and Greenford. So if you're interested in seeing that, go check that out. Lots of good advice there from two driving instructors at the same time. And let's do a tell me question while we're here. Now, normally tell me questions will be done at the beginning of your route. Um, so I'm gonna do it now, because I didn't do it at the beginning. Scott, would you tell me how would you adjust your headrest into a safe position? Now my headrest isn't adjustable, but it is in the position it needs to be in. And that is the middle of the headrest, roughly in the middle of your head. So you hear a lot of time, the answer on the DVSA uh, question sheet, which is written for like, I think someone that's done A-level maths, or somebody that studied maybe Shakespeare and ancient literature, because the answer says you must have the rigid part of the headrest level with the eyes, the top of the ears or eyes. And why? What kind of language is that? The rigid part? What's that? The top? The middle? The bottom? What's a ridge? I always thought the ridge was the top of the mountain, the ridge, but no, actually the ridge of the mountain's the, the ridge, the side of the mountain. So if you say the rigid part of the headrest, you mean the ridge, the flat bit at the back. Now, if that flat bit has to be at least level with the top of my ears and my eyes, then there's a lot of flat bit, there's a lot of ridge. I mean, do I want it all the way up so that almost at the bottom of the ridge is level there? Or do I want it all the way down so that the top of the ridge is there? Or do I want the middle part of the headrest level with the middle of my head? Honestly, why do you have to word things in such a way that nobody understands them unless you were born in the bloody 18th century? What is the purpose? I don't get it. 
it just doesn't help, does it? It doesn't make things easier for people to understand. We live in a multicultural city and the bloody Britannia since the day of the bloody dawn, we've had three quarters of the world under the Queen's control and we go around talking like, oh yes, make sure you have the ridges part of the headrest leveled with the top of the eyes or ears. Mate, just calm it down a little bit and talk like normal people do and just say the middle of the headrest with the middle of your ears. Or the middle of the headrest with the middle of your head. You know, and just as close to the head as possible so it supports your head. The headrest is there to support your head. It's not there as a maths equation or some kind of Shakespeare literature. <laughs> oh, I have fun in traffic. <laughs> And if you're driving a manual car, don't do it. You'll be bloody breaking your back right now, holding the clutch down, lifting it just to the biting point, to put it back down again, to raise it back up again, to put it back down again. And oh my God, my back is aching now. It's absolutely horrendous. Do not drive a manual car. If you're living in a big city, like I just mentioned, come on guys, we're moving forwards. We're 2021. You know, electric cars, no steering wheel, autonomous driving, automatic cars have got new technology transitions in them which are so much more efficient. Why do you need a manual car anymore? You don't, unless you need it for, for work. I don't know, maybe you do, but most people don't. Please don't put yourself through the pain that I put myself through for about 15 years, and I mean pain, pain in my back from bloody pumping that clutch like a madman in traffic like 50 times just to go five minutes down the road. Now, what am I doing? I'm literally doing nothing. I'm not doing anything. The car's doing it for me and it just makes it so much easier to have a conversation, to watch the road ahead, to keep my eyes on the road ahead, to react if I need to. I don't have to worry about downshifting gears, raising the clutch up, braking at the same time, doing all of that technical engine braking madness. No, I just put my foot on the brake and come to a stop and it's pretty simple and I wanna go again. I take my foot off the brake and accelerate. If you're one of the people that has people in their life saying stuff like, well, you're not really a real driver if you can't drive a manual car, just smile politely and nod. Mm, yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. The best form of success is success. So just do your thing, be yourself, and don't worry about what other people say and think because that's their perception. What you believe and what they believe are completely different things. And it doesn't matter to you, does it? What matters is what you believe in. Right, we're here at the roundabout. Now, this is what I wanted to show you. Normally, there's three lanes here. And if I'm turning right, what lane do I use? The far right lane. Yeah. Now, today, we've got this roadworks here. And we've got a new sign up here. I did actually cover this in the last video. But I did a different route, a harder route, a longer route, which involved going straight ahead at the roundabout. This time we're following signs to Witten now, and Witten is turning right third exit. Now, normally where the roadworks are today, there'll be another lane. Now, that would be the lane that you would want to cover. Like I said, I've made videos on this roundabout before, so if you go through the channel, search Isleworth, uh, there's a whole playlist on Isleworth, you will find it. And you'll drive through those cars you drive onto that white section of paint there and then you would keep that lane and then hopefully mirror mirror signal left as you pass the second exit and move into this left lane if you feel it's safe if you don't you can continue to use this right lane wait at the traffic lights and then when the traffic lights go green make sure you already have your mirrors you have your signal done so people behind you know that you're going to exit the roundabout and then you'd make your way across there are two lanes on the exit to the roundabout, which you're about to see, and you can maintain the right lane on the exit. If you feel it's safe, then by all means, cross into the left lane, as you will need the left lane as you approach the traffic lights ahead. Worst case scenario, you use the right lane, you stay in the right lane, you come up to the traffic lights, it's a right only lane at the traffic lights, 
where do you go or what do you do next? The correct answer is turn right. Don't pressure yourself into turning left or moving into the left lane if you don't feel it's safe because there is a car or another vehicle there. Then the safest thing to do is to stay in your lane and go where the road markings show you. If you disobey road markings, you will fail for disobeying road markings or response to road markings okay so this is a different road this is a 20 road you might hear my warning chime has beeped at me a few times that's alerting me to the speed limit and telling me that i'm at the speed limit and not to go any faster you're probably going to notice the car again if you can see it out the back window is literally trying to sniff me and see what kind of perfume i'm wearing today um, it is an uneasy feeling when you have someone breathing down your neck like this vehicle behind however the law is the law and it's a 20 zone so i must not exceed 20 miles an hour there's a zebra crossing coming up it's quite a large lip on it so i'm going to actually gently slow down a little bit uh, just to make that bump a bit more comfortable and gently speed up a tiny bit more now that i finished the bump i'm still in a 20 zone and i'm looking ahead seeing that there's some traffic coming out the side road i'm being a bit nosy they're building something there so just seeing what's going on all right i can't see what's over the brow of this hill so i'm preparing to stop just in case there was traffic jam and it looks like that's the end of the road coming up the examiners asked me to turn right at the end of the road so now I'm coming towards the end of the road. I'm going to start to do my mirror check, interior mirror check, right mirror check, signal right. And I'm going to start to slow down early to jogging speed, to walking speed. And I'm going to stop because I can't see this road clearly. So I'm just going to come to a stop. Now that I'm at the end of the road, I can see it clearly. I'm going to see if it's safe, which it is now, and turn. Some of my other videos, I've put lots of cameras on the car, 360 cameras. I even have VR um, footage where you can put on your headset and you can look everywhere around the video as the car is driving through the test. Uh, have a look at the channel if you're interested to see the different angles so that you can see the traffic or even the VR experience. If that's something you're interested in and you want me to do more of the VR ones, please write that down in the comments below. And a thumbs up on the video will really help me out as well. So here we have another zebra crossing, still in a 20 zone, no one using the crossing, so I'm just gonna maintain my speed. I'm always looking to see the zebra poles and the beacons early, like you can see further down the road now. So can you see the next zebra crossing coming up? If you can, well done. Is there anyone there using the crossing? It's a bit hard to see through these parked cars here, but I can just about make out there's no one there. So I'm just maintaining my speed. I have another sign here by this Amazon van here, and I'm going straight, second exit at the roundabout. We have 20 zone ending, 20 zone beginning sign there. Probably one of the most strangest signs I've ever seen in my life. A 20 zone ending and then it's 20, uh, what the hell? Right, no one on the right of the roundabout. Whee, across I go. But look at this, another zebra crossing. A lot of people complete the roundabout, bang, straight into the zebra crossing and there's someone there or a car has stopped for someone there already and you have to suddenly jam the brakes on or the examiner does it for you, serious fault. So these are very common mistakes when completing roundabouts, there are zebra crossings on the exits and someone's using a zebra crossing. Many people are so fixated on the roundabout itself, which is totally justified, that they may miss the actual pedestrian crossing. So that's definitely a highlight and something that you need to know about. Okay, so we're on a 20 road, I've got oncoming cars, and I've got a bicycle. So is there any way I can fit through the gap between the oncoming traffic and the bicycles on a 20 mile an hour road? Doesn't look like it here. But now after this red car, look, there's no one there. So I'm checking my interior mirror, right mirror. Now some bicycles actually quite easily do 20 miles an hour. That guy's doing about 15 miles an hour. 
so I can go round him extra five miles an hour quicker, proceed to keep following the road, keep in progress at 20 miles an hour. If I stayed behind him all the way down this road, when there's been opportunities for me to overtake, I would fail my driving test. The reason is because I need to make progress. If that means I can overtake, yes, overtake. This is the whole reason for overtaking. Otherwise, we wouldn't really get anywhere. And it's safer as well because we're proceeding, we're making progress. The vehicles behind us are not going to get too annoyed. They're not going to want to overtake and go into a potential danger zone. So, um,. We're almost back, so Twickenham Stadium's coming up here on the left, and then when we get there, we turn left at the traffic light, and then we come back round towards the Tesco roundabout, and we're back at the test center. So, what do you think of this test route? What do you think of this test area? Bear in mind, this is one of the most difficult routes at Isleworth. I actually think Isleworth is a pretty good test center. I've had good results there in the past, most people passing first time at Isleworth, and I haven't been there that often. So in maybe 10 years of being a driving, or over 10 years of being a driving instructor now, I've probably been to Isleworth about 20 times, and I would say about 18 of the people that went there passed first time. So it's a really good uh, test center and a really nice area. So um, if you're looking to do Isleworth, then yeah, go for it. Quite a nice route. Uh, make sure you practice those big roundabouts like I've just shown you on the roundabout. Make sure you know what lane to use. And yeah, I don't see any reasons why it's that much more difficult than most test centers. Uh, pretty good. All right, so we're coming back now to the Tesco roundabout. Um, I'm I, uh, still on a 20. Yes, I am. So there's my reminder sign. And remember we, so that's a small circle, that's a reminder. Remember, we see another one here, 20 here. So really difficult, but I'm keeping the speed limit. And then a bit further down, you'll see the bigger circle there, which is the 30 mile an hour sign. And that means there's a change. I'm gonna be turning left at the roundabout, so interior mirror, left mirror, signal left. And I'm gonna slow down to jogging speed, early observations. Uh, observations that car looked like it was going to keep coming around so I kind of slowed down a bit more and then it turned off the roundabout so because I'm approaching at a slow speed I can do all of those calculations way more easier even the people that might be saying yeah well you're experienced you're, that's yes that's true however try it literally if you're having so much issues with roundabouts that's the secret approach it slower Every single time, approach a roundabout slower, slower, slower. And when you reach the roundabout, you're going to find it so much easier to do everything. You don't even really need to think about it. It just kind of happens. So that is the foundation. Slow speed on the approach to all junctions, especially roundabouts. Okay, so again, we're back here at the awkward speed bumps. I'm keeping roughly one meter from the left, which means that yeah, my head almost bangs on the ceiling. But I've got to do this. If I don't, then I could fail for unnecessarily driving down the middle of the road. Even if it does give the examiner a more comfortable ride, I have heard mixed kind of messages about this. Uh, other driving schools say do it. Yeah, do it, but do it within reason. Make sure you're not just driving all the way out into oncoming traffic because then your examiner will most likely fail you. Uh, Got to keep one meter on the left, guys. Okay, there's plenty of... Yeah, they're all turning, I can see that. So I look to the right, slow speed on the approach. Lots of vehicles there, so I stopped. But then when I stopped, I looked at the wheels. I could see where they're definitely going to be going um, because of my slow speed. I see there's a big red monster coming. Uh, I'm going to have to go over the line which means I'm gonna go over the line and into a big red monster. <laughs> so I'm not doing it, I'm just gonna stay here, giving plenty of room from the next parked vehicle in front, checking mirrors, even a little look over the shoulder, only if you feel comfortable looking over the shoulder, you don't have to do that. The only times you have to look over your shoulder for your driving test is when you're reversing or before you're reversing and before you move off from being a parked car. 
So if you feel comfortable checking blind spots when you're on the move, I would suggest it. It's definitely something that will keep you uh, safe, but make sure it's short, snappy. One second, one second. And make sure that you do it at a reasonable speed, okay? So you feel comfortable doing it, at least to start with. And then that way you'll get the practice in, you start to feel more confident, and then you'll be a more skillful and safer driver. Okay, still on the 20 road, any more big red monsters? No, the road seems to have widened out here in the middle section, it's quite nice, a bit more room. So if I had any oncoming vehicles, not too bad now. I'm gonna move in, give more space to the oncoming vehicles, keeping roughly one meter from the left. And mirror, mirror, signal, or I don't need to signal here, it's not gonna benefit anybody. And just moving out around the parked cars. Now look at this, very narrow, I'm gonna start to slow down. And then that way I keep my eye on the parked cars, keep my eye on the oncoming traffic. So I'm just looking out over to see my gaps. And because I'm doing a slow enough speed, I'm able to do that safely. Okay, we are almost back. The old test center used to be here. I'm so glad it's not. That building is starting to look beautiful now. For about 20 years, it had scaffolding all over it. Sorry I digress, but um, yeah, looking looking nice now. And the residents must be a lot happier not having people coming to do the driving test. Imagine living in a driving test center. Okay, all right, coming towards the roundabout now, and we're almost back. Mirror, mirror, signal right, turning right, second exit, open junction, good visibility on the right, no one there. Coming into the roundabout, onto the circle slightly so I don't hit the pavement, which just noticed has been extended out into the road. Okay, um, so that means there's even more likelihood I'm going to hit it because they've made it come out and towards me. So that's why I needed to go a little bit on that circle as I turned around the roundabout, just slightly driving the right hand half of the car on that circle. Because if I went all the way around it, if I needed to go all the way around it and not hit the pavement, I'd probably have to do it about two miles an hour, three miles an hour. We don't want to be doing that. Nice and smooth, jogging speed. And then we're just cruising nice and gentle on the roundabout, not dangerous, and that avoids us from hitting the pavement, so it's actually safer, okay? If you disagree with me, please write that down in the comments below, as there's many people that disagree. You probably noticed I just went out round the bump, check my mirror, move out, check my mirror, move in. Now, I'm not doing that here. I uh, shouldn't have done it back there. How far away from the parked cars do I need to keep? Or from the pavement, whatever's on the left, Yes, that's correct, one meter. That's roughly a door width, so if you open the door, it's that distance. We're back at the test center. Mirror, mirror, signal right. Take the next road on the right, into the test center. And there you go, ba -ba 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 -bom. coming in. Nice turn onto my half of the road. Take the next entrance here on the right, into the test center. Mirrors around this car, mirrors to the signal, one meter from the car, reach the middle line and turn. Has to be perfect, don't turn too early and go into the oncoming lane as someone might be exiting the car park here. You can't see in until you really get to the point of turn. So make sure you do everything precisely and do your best to show the examiner you're a safe driver. That's the end of the route, the end of the test, and switch your engine off. This is where you'll be giving your um, debriefing, whether you pass or fail, and I hope it's a pass. I've been Scott, this is Two Day Pass, and we'll see you next time.